and welcome to Email Time Talk. Woo! Happy dance! Um, for those of you guys who know, Email Time Talk is kind of the time where you guys send me emails and I want to answer them and reply to some of your requests, etc., etc. And the emails that we have today deal a lot with skincare, a little bit with summer, pimples, leg stuff like that. Um, and I wanted to take the time to address these, but instead of typing them up and killing my fingers and only responding to one, I thought that a lot of other people might have the same questions, so I wanted to make sure that it's out there for everybody. All right, so there's a guy named Dylan who emailed me, and he's telling me a little bit about his story. He's had acne since he's 15, and he's now 19, and he's tried just about everything, and he wants to know... Um, when will his acne, or when does most acne, calm down or clear up? Now, there's the big misconception. Everyone's like, oh, don't worry, your acne will clear up. It'll just get better when you're older. If your acne is hormone related, that may be true. But to really answer Dylan's question, I have to say it really depends on your genetics and what you're doing with your life. Obviously, if you're under a ton of stress at school, your acne isn't going to get better until you're maybe out of that stress. If you're eating really, really unhealthily, um, maybe you should try even just a couple more fruits or vegetables. Maybe just exiting, or what would that be? Exiting? You don't exit pizza. You um, Uninclude pizza in your diet? Disinclude! Disinclude pizza from your diet for a week or something. And just kind of see these little changes. Also, it's about the skincare that you use. Are you actually using something morning and night, or are you just saying that you are and then, oopsies, I forgot three times this week? You know what I mean? Because I, I am personally guilty of it. I would be like, oh yeah, I washed my face five times, you know, from Monday to Friday, I've been doing good, and then I look back, I'm like, oh wait a minute, no I didn't. Uh, but Dylan, the biggest thing for you would probably be just to work on your lifestyle. A lot of people say that it clears up um, after school, after their teenage years, if it is related to hormones or things like that. So a lot of people might say 20, 22. Um, but for men, I've known it goes into the 30s. It goes, um, especially for women, a lot of them get hormonal acne when they're like 40 and lifestyle acne and stuff like that. So it really does not depend on the age, but my biggest tip and trick, so that's to answer your question, but my biggest thing to say is look at your lifestyle, see what little modifications you can make, and also try skincare that works for you. I would personally, I don't know your skin exactly, I'm not a doctor, going to school, hopefully someday I'll be, uh, but I would recommend... Ask your doctor, of course, but I would recommend maybe a good exfoliator to kind of slough off some of that top skin, a good moisturizer, and a good sunscreen that won't break you out, because some sunscreens are pretty cloggy, poggy up inside our faces, which is very, very frustrating, because we do need sunscreen every day. Um, also, take a look at different chemicals, what works for you. If you have lighter skin, I love glycolic acid. Um, I don't recommend it for darker skin, because it could cause pigmentation. If you use glycolic acid with hydroquinone, that might be okay if you have darker skin, but do talk to a doctor before using any of those. Um, salicylic acid, not my favorite. There's a clicky link here. Um, this kind of explains a little bit about salicylic acid, a little bit how it works. If you do not put salicylic acid on your face and let it sit there, it won't work over the long run. Um, benzoyl peroxide is a good option, but it can be a little bit irritating and a little bit inflammatory. Uh, but I'll link a couple videos over here for you, Dylan, and for everyone else that might help you. If you click on those, they will also take you to the new video, but this video will just pause. So if you click on those, you won't stop like you won't lose this video or something. So if you do want to click on those, um, you can, and they'll just be like acne help and something like that. Um, but next email, I hope that that helps you, Dylan, and thank you again for writing. Um, the next is from Carol. And Carol says, Carol says that I'm a YouTube expert on skincare and acne prone skin. Carol, I'm not an expert. I'm just someone who chills on my living room floor with my cats over there licking their paws um, and try to tell you what I know. Even if it's not always right, I try my best to research it and give you the right information, but I'm not an expert, but thank you for the very kind compliment. It makes my heart go thumpity bum bum bum. Um, she wants to know, she gets zits on her legs any summer, every summer. She's asking what can she do to prevent them or what can she do to decrease the redness fast so that they don't give her a scar. Now Carol, I have to actually ask, are these pimples or are they ingrown hairs? So many times I've heard people saying that they get ingrown hairs on their legs and the reason that I ask is because you said that this is during the summer. Do you get these during the winter? 
Um, if not, my question is, do you shave during the summer more than you shave during the winter? Reason why is because shaving can cause a lot of those ingrown hairs, and ingrown hairs are very commonly mistaken for pimples or zits. They're obviously different things, but they look the same. They're big and bumpy and red and stuff like that. Um, if they are actually acne pimples on your legs, I'd say use whatever you're using on your face that works for you. Use some acne creams there. But Carol, to be completely honest, it does not sound like acne on your legs. It sounds like ingrown hairs. And if you shave, and if you shave during the summer, not the winter, and if you get them during the summer, not the winter, I'm almost positive that's what it is. So I will link a couple videos here. There's um, ingrown hairs, what they are, how to get rid of them, what to do about them. I keep on missing my finger. Um, what to do about them. There is shaving versus waxing. There's going to be a couple of videos over here for you, but if they are ingrown hairs, I would say try exfoliating. Put a good sunscreen on there um, and see if you can do something about the shaving or maybe changing up your razor because, oh, my phone's going off, but I honestly think that that could be what it is. My boyfriend called. He says hi. Um, I don't actually talk like that. Thank the Lord Jesus. What, what would it be like if I spoke like that every day? Seriously. Okay, so the next question is from Amber. So, hi Amber, how are you? Amber says she loves my hair in the videos, but her hair is super, super frizzy, and it's not really curly or straight. So Amber, I'm assuming that it's wavy. Um, it usually has one giant wave that curls out and looks super duper ugly. Oh, don't say that. Usually she tries to straighten it, but recently she got an iron that is hotter than her old one and it doesn't have a heat adjuster. Does, do I have tips or tricks for heat-free and weirdly wavy hair? She would appreciate it if I could help her out. Well, Amber, your hair sounds like mine used to be, and let me say the biggest thing that I could recommend for you might be to get a couple cuts. I don't know how long your hair is, but especially if you have super long hair that's wavy, it could just be that the, um, the weight of the hair is stopping you from having curls. So an option might be to get layers, um, and those layers would mean it's shorter up here and everything, and then that way um, they would actually be more curls because there's less weight on the hair. Um, another option would be just to try air drying it. I don't know if that's what you do when you say waves. I always think of combing hair um, because my hair sounds exactly like yours. One big, foofy, ugly wave that just flips out. Mine does that whenever I try to brush it. So maybe an option would be to air dry it. Don't brush it, just kind of fling it around. Ooh, I jingle today. Jingle, jingle, jingle. But just flip your hair around um, and see if you can air dry it that way. Don't like knock yourself silly. But you know, every single now and again, like put your fingers up by your roots and kind of air it out. Um, just let your hair dry that way. I would also recommend a deep conditioner or two. There are a lot of deep conditioners out there. Um, I did a review of John Frieda and Pantene, which I will link it in queue here. I didn't care for those, but the Pantene conditioner was pretty good. Um, I do think, was it the Pantene conditioner? I do think that there are others. I've heard great things about Perfect 10. I haven't tried it yet. I've been starting to use the Joyco. Um, I haven't tried the shampoo, but I do like the conditioner. I'd say avoid shampoos for you. Like I'd say only shampoo once every three days, but then actually go for a really deep hydrating conditioner and see if that will help you give a little bit more moisture so that it's not as frizzy. There's also something called Frizz Ease from John Frieda, and then there's also something called BioSilk. I personally like BioSilk better, but Frizzies is like the cheaper version that you might be able to find in the drugstore. But those are like oils that you can put on your hair, but they don't weigh them down and they don't make them look greasy. They're two of my favorite go-tos. Um, I would recommend both of them for you. So I hope that this helps you, and I would also love to hear more about your hair, so maybe you could email me, maybe you could post a video response actually showing us your hair, so that would be a little bit easier. But try those out and let me know if those work. The next email is from Hilla. And she says that she watched a video recently of my Neutrogena lip products review. I basically reviewed some lip glosses that Neutrogena had that were, I think, new. Someone told me they weren't new, but they were new to me. Um, she wants to know, she's heard of the Neutrogena Foundation, and she wants to know if I would recommend it. She's talking about Neutrogena Skin Clearing Foundation or Healthy Skin Liquid Makeup. Has she, have I used these, and what do I think of them? I will actually post a review of this very, very soon. I used to use one of them for probably two to three years in my youth, 15, 16 age, 14 to 16. Um, I used those religiously. They were the only thing I used. I was like, oh my God, my acne is so bad. This is what will cure it. Honestly, I'm very iffy about them, especially now that I'm older, now that I've gone through a little bit more school, after I've researched a couple more things, I know a little bit more about ingredients. They do have salicylic acid, which is good for the skin, but I feel like it's in a very low dose, and salicylic doesn't work for everyone. Also, um, 
Correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe that foundation has a bunch of silicones, and silicones, in my experience, and speaking to other people, are terrible for acne. So you know what, honey? I am going to do a review of that for you and anyone else who wants to see it, but um, personally, I didn't care for it in my experience. I did not try the other one that you spoke about. I think Neutrogena has some good foundations. I think that there are other foundations out there from the drugstore that are good, and I think that even other Neutrogena foundations would be better than the skin clearing one just because of the ingredients. That's just my opinion, though, and I'd love to hear what I have to say. So keep posted. I'll probably post that video hopefully within the next week if I can remember it and get to it and everything. That's a very good question, and if anyone else has tried it out, please post a video response or a comment to this video and let us know what you all thought of it. All right, so this next email is from Kate, and um, I originally wasn't going to answer this email. Well, actually, I was going to answer it, but I originally wasn't going to put it in this video, but I have gotten emails like this a ton of times before, so I am going to answer, and it's really, really awkward. It's talking about the buttocks area. Da -da -da -da. Or should I say, ba -ba -ba bomb? Get it? Da 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 da, ba -ba -ba bomb like bums. Anyways. Um, so she had a question. She's super, super sweet. She's going into, she enjoys the videos, all these sweet, kind words and compliments. And she says, I really do not want to be creepy. I do not, you know, a weirdo. I don't think you're a weirdo, hon. But she wants to know um, about the bum area, how to tone it up, how to keep it fit, how to keep it looking good. And I was thinking about posting a video on this, but I thought that maybe some people wouldn't want to watch that. I don't know. Tell me if you want a video on it. But basically about bottoms and how to make them look better. And she said in particular, what is my routine for my bottom? You guys know I am not into the gym. I've never had a gym membership. I don't like to diet. I like food way too much. Hi phone, what do you want? Facebook? Pfft, like I'm gonna answer that right now. Um, but there are a couple things that I would recommend. First off, hiking. I love to hike. I do it for fun. Um, and just kind of like I think that the activities that I enjoy help me a little bit with my bum. So I'll tell you a couple of those things and then what I would recommend for you. Personally, for me, I love hiking. And hiking, especially up hills, um, the movement there really works out that gluteus maximus. And did you know that our butt has three different muscles? We have the gluteus maximus, the gluteus medius, and the gluteus minimus. And hiking works out all three of those major butt muscles on each side. Tone up those cheeks, guys. Um, but hiking, I would definitely recommend. It's a great workout for your bum. Um, horseback riding, I love to horseback ride. Now, some people just sit on the horse. There are ways to ride a horse where you have to go up and down with the horse's movement so that you don't hurt its back as much. Um, that will work out your thighs a little bit more than your bum, but I always feel it in my bum after a good five hour ride, so that's something I would recommend. Um, you guys know that I like to do yoga. I think yoga has a little bit to do with it, but I think that if you're really serious about toning up your bum and you want to do exercises and things like that, I think that actually squats would be really, really good for you. Um, I think that squats, they'll definitely help out your thighs too, but I think that those will help your butt if you stand up and squeeze. Also, um, <clears throat> I did a yoga routine that I will link you to here, just like three easy yoga moves. There is one called the Cobra. Um, you can push up and that won't really help with your bum, but if you actually put your hands behind your back and tighten your bum muscles, that will also really, really help. If you are a gym person, they have like stair climbers. Even if you're not a gym person, you just have stairs in your house. That will be kind of similar to hiking, so you might be able to do that and work out your bum. But I think that they have a machine at the gym that's like a stair climber or something. That's what I would recommend. Um, for me, love to hike, love to do yoga, love to horseback. I always feel it in my bum after. I think that dancing, depending on what kind of dance, will also help you. Um, but yeah, try squats, try a couple different things, and that's what I would recommend. There's also something called Insanity. I don't do it every day like I should, but I do it a little bit just because I want to stay healthy. Let me tell you, Insanity is a workout, but they have some exercises in there that are like bum crunchers too. Now, you do have to pay for Insanity, so I wouldn't necessarily say go buy it. I, I don't want to tell you guys to do that, um, but if it's something you've been looking at, I would recommend it, and there might be a couple exercises in there that help you with your bum if you're not a gym kind of person. So thank you for your message, Katie. You asked a question that I'm sure a lot of other people have, um, and I hope that this helps you. Um, oh, and that's all we have for today because this video is like a million hours long. Um, but tell me, guys, do any of those videos we talked about sound interesting? Do you have any other video requests? Do you have any other questions? Um, I really love you guys, and I hope that this was educational and informative for you. Um, so my kitty's over there sleeping. I want to go wake him up and pet him because he's looking really cute. And I look forward to talking to you all tomorrow in the next video. So I love you guys. Again, thank you, and I'll see you all soon. Love you guys. Bye.